Hey, what's up everyone? As Overlanders, we all should carry a space box. If you don't, you should. Today's video, what have I got in my box? Welcome back everyone. If you're new to my channel, my channel is all about sharing my experiences in overlanding with the rest of the community. I bring out a video every single week. So hit that subscription button and the notification bell. As overlanders, we tend to travel remote and we got to be prepared for any eventuality. Breakdowns are a possibility and the further remote you go in, particularly like here we do in Australia, you need to have certain space and certain amount of knowledge to be able to make a running repair. Now, I'm not an expert, I'm not trained in mechanics, but there are things I have picked up over the years, so I can make certain running repairs if I had to. Now, one of the reasons I went for an older model, like my 80 series, is because I don't understand modern day electronics, let alone my knowledge in mechanics in general is very limited, so I'm safe with that. So, in my box, I carry certain spares which are suitable for my requirements and my vehicle. So this varies from individual to individual. So I'm just sharing with you what I carry and hopefully that'll be helpful to you. So at the end of the video, if you find it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Before we get into the video, something really exciting to share with you guys. I've got a new website out and it's also got a shop. Now in that shop, I've got art prints from my travels from here in Australia and back in Africa. And also I've got a range of t-shirts I came up with these slogans. This one says, my blood tested positive for mud. And I've got a, quite a few of those as well. Go check it out. Use the link, you get a 10% off. So it's not gonna be in any particular order. So whatever I get my hands onto as I go into the box, I'll explain to you what it is and why I carry it. So getting into it, the very first thing on the top of the box are, in my opinion, the best thing they invented since sliced bread, and that's, zip ties or cable ties. These are invaluable, like stating the obvious. And I carry them in three different sizes and lengths or strengths and lengths, you could say. And these can be really, really useful. So that's cable ties. Then the next best thing after sliced bread, WD-40, you need to have, you have to have one of these. Next best thing after sliced bread, duct tape, duct tape, duct tape, I cannot say it enough. Pretty useful. Now, um, what I also do is, I carry little, little, little bits and pieces. I'm not gonna go through each and every one of them individually, but I carry in these little organizers to make my life easy. I carry little bolts and nuts that might be useful, or tire valve caps, because you tend to lose them, you never know. So valve caps, little, um, other bits and pieces in these little organizers. By the way, since I've got my new website, certain videos I do, like this one for instance, at the end of the video, you can go and check it out, I will be leaving a list of the things that I carry in my vehicle. It net not necessarily be suitable for each and every one of you. You've got to figure out what works for you, what ve your vehicle needs and so on, but it'll be, be available in my website. So check it out whenever you want it. Then very important, figure out what fuses your vehicle takes, what in terms of what size, what shape and so on, and then take fuses with you because these would be very useful. So my AD series carries takes two different types of fuses. So one is this type here, and then the other is this type here. So I carry two types of fuses because that's what my vehicle takes. And I take a full range with me in terms of the load handling of each fuse. So, and that stays in this little organizer, which I can grab easily whenever I need. Then in this organizer, again, more bits and pieces. I carry a few bolts and nuts. Now, when I say bolts and nuts, I'm not talking about bolts and nuts to put a transmission together or something like that, but things I feel might be useful. So in different sizes, in different lengths and so on, I carry a various, a wide range of bolts and nuts. I'm not gonna go through again all of it. And also this is not a spare part, but this can be very useful because it stays in here. And this is one of those universal 
water tap openers, um, exactly what's called, I'm not too sure, but you can buy it from any hardware store. What I've noticed over the years is whether it's traveling here in Australia or back in Africa, whenever I get to a remote location and I do find a tap where I can draw some water, a lot of the time the tap, the top of it where you can un um, open or close it is not there. And that's done mostly intentionally. Back in Africa to stop animals, particularly monkeys and baboons from opening it and then just letting it run. Here in Australia, again, for security reasons or safety reasons, they, they just, they don't leave it on. So as long as you've got permission to draw water, then you don't have to go looking for the top end of it. You just carry one with you. So get one of these. V-belts, very important. Now, what I do as a practice is I don't wait for a particular amount of kilometers to be done or until I see where on my existing V-belts in the motor. So I have this routine where after a number of trips, whether it's worn or not, I have my V-belts replaced. They don't cost a lot of money, so just get it replaced is a peace of mind. At the same time, I carry a set of spare V-belts. Right, okay, electricals. Now, especially if you do a lot of water crossings or there's mud all over the place, electrical contacts can be sensitive. And one of these, so this is electrical contact spray. You never know when you might need one of these, so it's easy to clean out. Take one of these with you. Hose clamps of different sizes. Now, why different sizes? Well, I've gone through my 80 series and I've figured out the, the different types of hoses that the phobia has. So you, you could do the same thing, go through your vehicle. So there is radiator hoses, there is vacuum hoses and water lines and so on. And you never know when you might need, I'm not, you know, usually the clamps that are already there are, should be pretty strong, but, you know, and then for various other reasons, you might need a hose clamp. So figure out what sizes your phobia will take and carry a few around. Now coming to the fluids before I get to the box, starting on this end. Now in my 80 series, I've got a limited slip differential at the back. I don't have a, a locking hub. My locking hub is in the front. So the 80, when it came out of the factory, it came with a limited slip. And for me, it still works very well, does the job. So in case I needed, I carry limited slip oil, which is suitable for that particular mechanism so one of those so you need to figure out what your vehicle has um, coolant liquid transmission oil engine oil I carry two of those when I was buying these you know the guy at the store was trying to sell me a five liter can and I said to him if I'm out in the bush and I have to pour in five liters of oil there's something seriously long, wrong with my motor so I'm not going to bother carrying five liters. Now, some of you may disagree with me on that. Next thing, automatic transmission fluid. I've got an auto box. So automatic transmission fluid. You may not have an auto box. You might have a manual box. Then suitable oil for that. Brake fluid. I mean, you should always be checking your fluid levels as you travel. So as a practice, what I do is I check my fluid levels before setting off, you know, after a night stop. And then if something's in a bit low, top it up tub of axle grease or bearing grease. I do carry a set of bearings. I carry one for the front, one for the back. And I have got the garage that I take my 4B2 to teach me how to change bearings. I do carry, it's not in this box. And that's because I recently had my bearings changed and I got them to use the ones that I already had. So I need to get a set of bearings, but that usually sits in this box. A spare set of locking hubs for the front. Again, I have kind of trained myself through the help of friends who have the knowledge how to change one of these. They don't, it depends on the type of traveling you're doing and how much stress you put on your hubs, but it's no harm carrying one of these. This is something really useful, and we tend to not think about it much is funnels. So I've got a set of three funnels that I carry lot less messy when you're using one of these hoses vacuum hoses this can be used for vacuuming vacuum as you know if a vacuum hose burst or cracked one of these will work or even hoses again you've got to make sure the size that goes into your 4b so make sure you've got the right one 
Something else that's really useful in my opinion is carry yourself a spare set of wheel studs. Figure out what fits into your vehicle and carry a spare set. And just as useful as zip ties are, I carry a set of different gauge size wire. They can be useful and a spare air filter. Now this one is not brand spanking new, but this is something I had lying around so the, the, the air filter I have got in my 4B's engine is a brand new one, the paper filter type, which I, after every trip, depending on how dusty the trip might have been, I replace immediately. I don't wait for the next service, I just chuck in a new one. But this one is one of those types where you can clean and reuse and you put the oil coating when you put throw it into the 4B. So I carry one of these because I can reuse them and that's simple reason I have this one instead of a paper filter because um, I can hold it under a tap, clean it, douse some oil into it and then it's back to work. But that's my space box and what I carry in it. Now this may not necessarily apply to each and every one of you so you need to figure out what you need to carry. Depends on your vehicle and so on. Now I've tried to over the years found this is this works for me. This is basic stuff but essential in the time of need. Now, I also run a very well looked after, regularly maintained vehicle, so you should be as well. Uh, so the you know, things going wrong is a lot less in that sense. But again, out there, you never know when things could go wrong. At least you've got the basics to look after yourself. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscription and notification bell because I bring out a video every single week. And oh, by the way, don't forget to use the link to my new website and get 10% off merchandise. And uh, I'll see you next week in another video. Thanks for watching.